like one disc. It's like the size of my head. Ugh. Yeah. Right, so uh, today we're currently going to unbox some new brakes that my dad got for his FN2. You would have seen the FN2 in a few videos before, but um, yeah, I thought that I'd do a full vlog on the actual kit itself. Um, it's it's like a it's like a hybrid kit kind of. It's not as expensive as, as most kits out there like StopTech and stuff, but to be honest the four pots in this are gonna be just as good. He's just there, we just wanna be in the video. Um Hi. <laughs> So the calibers are off either a Cleo Sport or a Megan. Sporty Megan I imagine, because the big as you'll soon see. And the discs off a three fifty Z. Um and the pads are are the Frodo's? Frodo DS Performance. I keep getting them mixed Formerly up. Formerly DS 2000s. Yeah, these be DS 2000s and then they rebrand them as Performance. You didn't want to go 2500, did you? Because they were like more track use. It's a bit overkill. Bit, bit overkill because the, the FN did. My dad doesn't want to track it, which is fair enough. It's more just a road car, fast road car within national speed limits. Um, so, yeah. so well, Everyone knows the FN2s aren't that fast. Everyone knows FNs aren't that quick. They have no talk. Are they a real type bar? That is the question. That is the question. That darn torsion rear beam. <laughs> ah, but you've got the on your pole bar now. We're digressing. We are. So yeah, we're going to get the unboxing and then obviously I'll be recording the fitting process, kind of. It's not necessarily going to be like a full tutorial, which... Yeah. It's, install. it's more just an install. I'm only going to do like one side, because the other side's exactly the same. And the video will be really long if I did both, because it would just be a repeat of the other process. But, uh... They're also just really cool to look at as well. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to it then. Ooh, pro. Professional parts for professional people. Rings of the old. Spigot rings for the discs. Spigot rings. I saw the old pro. So that is, uh, that is one caliper right there. Brembo, as you can see. You'll see, I believe, yes, this side here. Those really cameras, now the camera picks up, it says Renault and on this side it says Zubwembo so yeah pretty cool and they all have called four parts and they're huge wait, look at that for perspective, let's just, just get, a, get your hand in the shot there from a distance look at that so the size is forearm this year. hardware hardware let's do the car for that they need to be in the Right, there's your DS performance pads. That's in there. Frodo. You could have went for like yellow stuff again, but couldn't you? But yeah, they, these are also pretty big as well. I mean there's like my hand and like that's that's sort of give a an idea. I don't have particularly like really small hands or anything, but yeah, they're pretty big pads. Mm -hmm. 324 mil diameter by 30 mil. Yeah, they're um, they're pretty big and very nice. But also the hole in the middle is too big, right? Because the FN2 centre hole is 64.2 millimeters. Hence, you have the spigots which fit in the back. Yeah, so now it, if it squares it up, yeah, and centralises it at all. That's them. And then the thing that makes it all work. A bit other than the calipers. Yeah. These are the these are quite well hidden on the actual. These are proper. Very like, well machined. Yeah, the 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 machining on these is just awesome, and also the. Just how they look and everything. It's a real shame that like you're not really gonna see them. Mhm. Mm so you got the case system there. It's not like an anodized metal finish, it's, it's weird, but it's just perfectly flat, there's nothing, not a single imperfection on it really. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And you also, with the bolts, you get... Some shims, mm. which I've been told you don't need to use, but they're there. The bolts are... 10.9 tensile strength for your mountain kit 
and the board to the caliper to mount the kit are 12.9s. So tensile strengths are good. And tempo nine's like minimum, isn't it? For, for brakes and suspension, yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm not gonna do this, but that that's like a that's like one disc. It's like the size of my head. Ugh. But yeah, that's that's a disc. I'll um, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the bottom for the actual kit itself. So if you actually want this after this video, so you'll have this video and you can look up a bit more. You you'll see where you can buy them from and stuff. But yeah. Oh, and finally, caliber, a bit lighter than the uh, the disc. These are actually the the entire kit. The caliber of the parts, the bracket, and the disc weigh about half a kilogram lighter than stock. Mm. Bear in mind that these were a lot bigger. Yeah. So you unsprung weight. So you're getting like better brakes and weight reduction in a way. Yeah, with un unsprung weight. Yeah, if you're really big on rear weight reduction and stuff, which is great. I don't. We didn't. I don't think you necessarily got them for weight reduction, but it is handy. Aesthetics, aesthetics really. Aesthetics, yeah. I mean, that's gonna look. Always find a way. The car show I went to the last video that I went to the car show. I'm gonna assume it'll be the last video. Probably post this before anything else. I had pretty much the same kit, wasn't it? The R-Boss. Yeah, the R-Boss for your 500s, like the, the ridiculously priced ones, had this type of brake kit on. And, um, yeah, it looked pretty pretty naughty. Pretty much the same size wheel as well, wasn't it? 17s. No, one's 17s, so. Still looking real good. Still gonna look really good, though. So we're just taking the wheel off uh, now. Just jacking the car up, but. I don't think you really need to see how to take a wheel off, I imagine you probably already know that. <laughs> um, some things you should note though with these brake kit that I didn't mention before in the unboxing is that you will need a minimum of 10mm spacers to fit them on. We have 15s in it. 15mm spacers. We're fitting, fi we've already got 10mm spacers on the back. There's 15 on the back? I thought it was 10 on the back. We've got 15s on the back. So we're putting 15s on the front, which are in here. There's the A spacer. Yeah, that's the only real requirement. Yeah, you need like, yeah, at least 17 inch wheels. Standard type R, FNs at least are on 18, so you, you, you're golden there if you put them on an FN. But yeah, so we'll just get in the car. Set now, the uh, covers. Stormforce cover, which is pretty good, isn't it? So far, it's, um, it's not really let you down yet. So, so that's uh, that's how the standard brake kit looks now. That's obviously what comes with the car. Our standard yellow stuff pads obviously don't. So we've got the yellow stuff pads in there. Goodridge braided hoses there as well. Uh, drop links both being changed recently as well. And also, you might be able to just see in there a little red poly bush in there. They were recently put in as well, along with the anti-roll bar, which I mentioned in a previous video. But yeah, that's how it all looks now. So obviously the, those Goodridge hoses will go on to the new kit as well, which is cool, so it all ties in together. And uh, this back plate's going to be altered as well, for the new kit as well. So yeah, getting there. Mm -hmm. Getting there. So uh, we're just going to remove the caliper now, so the next shot will be the caliper totally off. I think anybody who is going to be fitting a brake brake kit like this should know how to take off a standard caliber. It's kind of standard, really. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So the next shot will be that, and we'll take it from there. Right. So we're going to fit the posh bracket now on the like. So I really didn't want to say this one fitted because it's emotional, because it's just how nice it is. But we're going to use that as more of a datum to find out how much we're going to have to take off the back plate for the caliber. Which they didn't see has some uh, tape on to prevent it from getting scratched because it's just too beautiful to be scratched. But yeah, so we're putting that now. And we'll be able to find out how much we've got to shear off the back plate. But we'll see. It's a real shame you're not going to see them. <laughs> right, so that's how much has actually been cut off from the back plate. And that's the caliper on there. There you go, so and you see the back plate was actually a little bit too big so I've had to snip off this bit here. And see him down there at the bottom as well. Um, but yes, that's a caliper on now.
looking pretty nice. Try Again, fit. yeah, it's a tri fit, isn't it? It's not actually, you know, it's going to come back off. And then these bolts here, the 12.9 tensile strength bolts as well, that'll go in. And then the 10.9s will go around that end. But yeah, looking good. Right, so it's been about an hour and a half, your hour and a half in the future. And uh, it's on. That's a dirty finger. Well, there it is. Now I'll just get around. As you can see, the disc is on. That's the caliper. And on the back here, got the pads in as well, the DS Performance. Bolts in. Across here. Along the side here with the bolts going in, we've got a uh, 0.5 shim at the bottom. Straighten this up. There's a lot of fettling, wasn't there? Um, just trying to get the caliper straight, but um, it the seems. Gauge. Yeah, we had to feel the gauge across here. Um, because it was either more angled towards this way or more angled towards that way. So we've got a shim at the bottom, which is obviously provided by them. And at the top, uh, there isn't there isn't a shim at all. Didn't really need one. But yeah, it's looking good. So next on the list now is getting the brake pipe in, the braided hose there in, and then uh, getting the bleeds in it. Spacer. Oh yeah, and there's a spacer as well. Come to that in a bit though. Right, so that's the uh, the caliper. The brake's fully fitted now, more or less. So at least one side. Like I said, I was only gonna be doing only doing really one side, wouldn't we? And then turn it around. But um, video-wise, you'll only have one side. But this is how it looks. So there you go. We've got the 15 mil spacer on there as well. You can see a lot better than standard. They're all bled up now as well. With the uh, Goodridge horses in there. All fitted up. The inside first, then the outside. Yeah. And then the drum distance. Far distance, artsy shot, you know. More than likely see the brace behind the wheel in other videos as well, but that's how it looks. Right, that's with the uh, wheel on. <laughs> as you can see, though, how close the caliper is to the rim. People see a tens a minimum. I think we're both thinking there. Uh, otherwise, don't we? Mm -hmm. There's no way that would be tight on a ten. <laughs> yeah. That was cool though. That was a hefty yawn. That. So that's the end of the video. I've finally done an outro. How about that, eh? I keep mentioning I never do them while I'm doing them. So I guess now I'm not really never doing them anymore. Um. So yeah, if you enjoyed this type of video, then. For those who do watch, leave a comment and, you know, that would help. Um, but yeah, it's, FN's looking pretty good now. Brakes are crazy. But yeah. Mugen spoiler next, yeah? He doesn't want to get a Mugen spoiler. To be honest, I'd rather have the brakes in the anti roll bar that I run it over a spoiler. But it does look pretty cool. But the brakes are kind of cooler, if I'm honest. Anyway, yeah. So, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.